Hi there, I'm Sam Luce here with Isotope. Let's talk about gain staging. Gain staging is a fundamental part of mixing and producing music, especially in digital audio workstations. But for some reason, the term confuses people. So what is gain staging and how can understanding it improve your mixes? In this video, we're going to take a look at the origins of gain staging in analog and digital systems, and also how you can utilize gain staging to your advantage when setting up a project. It's one of those topics that is spoken about so often that it's worth digging in and finding out exactly how understanding it can help you. Let's check it out. In plain terms, gain staging is all about setting the optimum level for the next link in the chain. In the analog world, Setting the gain on your preamp for a vocal recording is a form of gain staging because you're making sure the signal isn't hitting the door too loud or too quiet. Too loud and you'll have a distorted take. Too quiet and you'll bring up the noise floor in the equipment you're using. In the digital world, setting the makeup gain of a compressor plugin or the output of a level on your EQ plugin are forms of gain staging because you want to make sure you're not overloading the next plugin that comes in the chain. Let's define a few terms so we're all on the same page from the off. Gain can be thought of as the amount of amplification added to a signal. In a microphone preamp, this is fairly self-explanatory. As you increase the gain, you increase the level of the source that's plugged into it. In plugins, a good example of this is the makeup gain on a compressor, where the level of the signal is raised to make up for the parts of the sound brought down by the compression. EQ also uses gain to bring up the level of a specific piece of the frequency spectrum. Unity gain is a term used when the output level is the same as the input level. Having your fader at 0 dB is unity gain. It's not adding or taking anything away from the level of the signal. More on faders later. When we discuss noise, we're talking about any unwanted parts of the signal that may have been created by a processor. This may be familiar to guitarists using high gain amplifiers where the amp hisses at high gain settings. Or maybe to those of you who have recorded a really quiet vocalist, you end up turning the gain of the preamp so high that you get a faint hiss in the background. The noise floor is the base level of noise that any piece of equipment will impart upon the signal. More modern equipment will have a far lower noise floor than older equipment, as technology has allowed manufacturers to create pieces with better tolerances and generally quieter components. Although modern equipment such as your audio interface will have a low self-noise floor, it's still something you need to take into consideration, and gain staging will help you along the way. That term, signal to noise, is a ratio of how loud the signal is compared to the self-noise of the equipment passing the audio. If the signal-to-noise ratio is too low, you'll get noise that may be tricky to remove. Maintaining an optimum signal-to-noise ratio, where the desired signal is strong enough for any noise to be insignificant, is one of the key concepts of gain staging. Another important element is headroom. This is the maximum level that any link in the chain, be it analog or digital, can output before it starts to clip or distort. So with those key terms defined, let's take a trip back and look at why gain staging was ever a concern in the first place. Often when using analog equipment, engineers have the option to purposefully overload a certain piece of gear because putting it into the red, as it were, created some harmonic distortion that was pleasing to the ear. Think of a distorted guitar amp. This is using distortion to the advantage of the signal. But in the digital world, we have to think of things quite differently. We have an absolute level above which we cannot pass this is called 0 dB FS, that's 0 dB full scale. It's the limit that any digital signal can handle. Anything that's pushed up above this level will give us unpleasant distortion. A digital system doesn't have the luxury of components like valves and transformers that sound pleasing in small doses when they're pushed hard. It simply can't handle anything above its limit of 0 dB FS. Let's see it in action. You can see here in RX two vocal recordings that have been recorded through two different chains, both going into the red. The first is digitally clipped. This has been achieved by pushing the microphone preamp until it peaks. The AD or analog to digital converter is now clipping. And since it's been converted to digital, this is digital clipping, the kind we like to avoid. See how the peaks are completely flattened. Even if I bring the level down, this is still squared off. The second has been clipped in the analog domain, going through a valve preamp. I then brought the level of the preamp output down. 
so it's being converted to digital at the AD converter at a lower level. Still clipping in the analog domain, but not in the digital. See how the peaks, while still being rounded off, are affected far more gently. This is not the kind of clipping we associate with a digital system, but far more like a saturated tone that we get when pushing analog equipment to its limits. The idea of gain staging in the analog world is important because it demonstrates why it became such an important topic to understand in the first place. The noise floor of a piece of analog equipment is generally static, so it's at a certain dB level regardless of the signal passing through it. The aim is to get the signal far enough above the noise floor that it stops being a consideration because then it's so quiet we need not worry about it. However, too much signal and you're hitting the point of distortion, again, a static point. So gain staging in the analog world is very much a balancing act of having enough signal for it not to introduce noise, but quiet enough to not distort the next piece of equipment in the chain. In a digital system, we're concerning ourselves with making sure our signal isn't hitting that zero dB FS point anywhere in the chain, because digital doesn't have the same luxuries that analog has. Once you hit zero dB, there's no magical analog warmth imparted upon the signal, just clipping of the waveform, as we saw in RX. Modern digital systems, though, are actually capable of handling signals that go above that point of no return, and they do it in a pretty clever way. You may be familiar with the concept of 16-bit and 24-bit audio. These bits represent the dynamic range available for the audio, dynamic range being the difference between the loudest and quietest part of the signal. So a master at 24-bit can easily cope with two sounds that are 100 dB different in level, but 16-bit can't. Well, many modern doors now employ the concept of floating point. This means that the door will actually be working behind the scenes with a dynamic range of 32 or even 64 bits. This acts as a safety net for any stray peaks that go above that digital limit. And although it may be in place, it's good practice not to go above that point anyway. Although your door may be able to process audio at high bit rates, many plugins can't. If the door is capable of high bit rates, but the plugin you're using isn't, you're still going to be clipping within the plugin, as it can't process audio in the same way as the door can. If you're taking audio out of your door into hardware units, anything above that 0 dB limit, 32 bit or not, is going to lead to problems, as the high bit rate is only relevant as long as the audio stays in the box. So what does this actually mean and how does it apply to gain staging? Well, let's take a look at an example. Here I have a multi-track session and I hear that the drums are pushing to the point of distortion. They have a bit of a pumpy, grainy kind of quality to them. Check it out. If you have issues like this in a session, it's likely down to incorrect gain staging somewhere along the line. Here are a few steps to take so you can help track down where the clipping is taking place. First, let's check the waveforms themselves. If we zoom in, we can see that these are normal and nothing is squared off. Okay, let's check the end of the chain where I have ozone 10 instantiated. Nothing out of the ordinary there, no red lights. Let's check what's going on in Neutron, which I have on the drum bus. Okay, I see the issue. When I've compressed the drums, I've brought the makeup gain up too high and then had to compensate for the increase in level using the main output level within Neutron. This is causing clipping within the compressor plugin. We can see this clipping if we were to change the order of these modules and put the EQ after the compressor. We see that the audio is going above zero on the meter on the left. We have minus 40, minus 20, and zero dB at the top. The signal is going beyond that very top point. Although we're not clipping any meters, we can hear that distorted effect, and it's because I'm driving Neutron far too hard. I would be far better off switching on the automatic makeup gain on the compressor in Neutron, at which point I can bring the main output on Neutron back to Unity, and we'll hear that the distortion has gone away. So why is gain staging important? Well, we can think of it in three key ways. 
Firstly, having a good strong signal from the off means that we're reducing the amount of noise in the signal. Once the audio hits the door, if you increase the level of that signal, as well as increasing the desired signal, you're also increasing the level of any noise that was introduced in the first place. Maintaining a strong signal in the first instance will ensure you're keeping noise to a minimum. When recording, try to aim for that sweet spot of around minus 12 to minus 9 dB on your door's meters. This way, you're going to have a good strong signal coming in, but will have minimal noise to worry about. Secondly, keeping the mix out of the red at any point in the mix means you're not overloading any piece of the puzzle. This applies to meters on individual channels, buses, and on the outputs of any plugins you're using. From a practical point of view, if you're recording in at a good strong level, your faders will likely be sitting at the point where there is maximum resolution. As faders are logarithmic, having them down in the lower bounds of their usable range means that a small move is going to make a big difference as opposed to having them in the upper range approaching unity where you have far more control and a small fader move really means a small fader move. So here's a few things to keep in mind to ensure great gain staging in your next project. When moving from one plugin to the next, briefly checking the level before and after using the bypass switch can ensure you're not adding too much level with that link in the chain. Features like auto makeup gain in compressors can help you here as they'll match the level of the outgoing signal with that of the incoming signal. If you're getting some red lights on a bus or your master fader, just turning down that fader won't stop the clipping. It will just output the clipped audio at a lower level. Instead, grab all the faders feeding that bus and bring them down together. Keeping your faders below zero means that you're not going to be overloading any buses too easily and you have more control over small moves when your faders aren't sitting down at those low levels. Keeping these few things in mind when crafting a mix will ensure you're getting the right level throughout your session and ensure you're not overloading any link in the chain where it shouldn't be. Now that you know how to gain stage your project, you can utilize these techniques and look forward to some great clear sounding audio. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.